Hezekiah's tunnel. You can see here that I'm squatting down. Uh, the water is only about eight inches deep, but the tunnel is very low here. So I have to squat to get through. And if you're a claustrophobe, you don't want to come in Hezekiah's tunnel. Fortunately, although I'm a multiphobic personality, I am not too claustrophobic. So I'm surviving this. Up a bit more here. You can see up ahead the length of the tunnel. You can also see that it's pitch black. If uh, I turn off the flash here, I'm trying to do that. There you go. That's what it's like without any light source. And I even actually do have a vague light source because of my screen. So I'll just close that. Now the only light I see is a little green LED light on my camera. And if I were to turn that off, uh, I wouldn't see a thing. So now I'm moving forward in pitch blackness. Uh, it's kind of weird. You, you literally can't see a thing. I feel the edge of the tunnel with my elbows so I know where to go. I know that... This is kind of a cool spot. You've got the tunnel making a curve here, but up above us is a natural crevice. And you can see this is a, a little cave, underground cave that they encountered. You can see some boulders and rocks jutting out. And uh, this is just, a, you know, natural. Listen in the background. You can hear the students ranting and raving and shouting. Uh, one thing I've learned about students over 30 years of teaching them, that life is one big party. And uh, you enjoy it while you're young, because once you have kids, <laughs> the party's over. It starts to be their party instead. You can see now we've reached a part where the tunnel's still very narrow but it's getting taller and taller. And I think this was because the, the crew, we're in the southern part of the tunnel now, they were heading north. And I think this crew didn't know quite how high to be to connect to the other tunnel, so they dug it a bit higher than necessary. And maybe they, it was like only half this high when they connected, they had to dig out the bottom part. You can see kind of phase one of the digging here and then they extended it. So it may have been, you know, kind of a two-part thing. But at any rate, it's, it's a lot higher here than it was. Uh, much higher than is necessary for the water to flow, because even at the highest flow, the water would only reach up uh, four or five feet. And most of the time, you know, it's a foot or two. So it doesn't need to be this tall, but they built a... At this point, you can see the tunnel's getting much higher compared to what it was before. This tunnel is uh, now probably 20 feet high. Uh, we're nearing the part where we connect to the Siloam Pool. I think we're coming near the end. You can see a faint light up above. Uh, again, it's getting much, much deeper now. The, the trench, the, the cutting is probably, I don't know, 25, 30 feet tall at this point, but just around the corner, I can see some light, so I think we're at the end. I've turned off the, the lamp, or the uh, light of my video camera. I think you can see slightly the light up ahead. So I think we're coming out. Yeah, there it is. Now this pool connects into uh, the Pool of Siloam, which was a big reservoir from the time of Isaiah and Hezekiah on through the Byzantine period. It was a Byzantine church here, but it, it, the Byzantine set up their church. It, I told you, Let me see your coins.
That one looks like a Greek drachma. It is a drachma. And there you've got some widow's mites. And here are the Agrippa, Roman coins. Oh, there's, yeah. Very nice. Very nice coins, the Greek coins. What day is it today, Lori? And how old are you? You're not telling. <laughs> So that's the end of uh, the pool. You can see the water flowing. We've got a, a nice heavy flow, constant flow that provides then, this was much a, once a much bigger uh, pool to supply the water needs for the city of Jerusalem.